Let us have a look at the clinical situation that is given here. So it's an eight-year-old child. Okay, this is important. So the age of the child is important to note. Okay, and the other important thing to note are the clinical features. That is a small upper lip, deep mentolabial sulcus, averted lower lip, and her occlusal features show a distal step molar relation. Okay, so now these are very important features to note. On the basis of these features, we can identify that the patient has a class two division one type of a malocclusion. Okay, so here we see the a child has a short upper lip, averted lower lip, deep mentolabial sulcus. Okay, now these kind of features, clinical features, are very important to note. So you need to know the skeletal features. You know, need to know the extraoral as well as intraoral features of all the different types of malocclusions. Because in such case-based questions, this is how they are going to ask you. They will not give you directly that the patient has this malocclusion and ask you for the treatment plan. They will give you clinical features and you have to identify and diagnose what the clinical condition is. Okay, so here we know that the patient has a class 2 division 1 type of malocclusion. The second important information that they are giving us is that there is no habitual history and that the, her brother has a similar malocclusion. So why this is important is because etiology. Okay, we, need, we know that to treat any particular malocclusion, we know, need to know what the etiology is. If the etiology is because of a local cause, like a habit, so the first line of treatment would be to break the habit or intercept the habit. Okay, so here they have told us clearly that there is no habitual history. This is because there is a hereditary factor, right? Brother also has the same kind of malocclusion. This is important because now we know that if we do not intercept this growth at this point or we don't give any growth modification uh, appliances or do some growth modification in this patient, because of the genetic uh, factor, the patient is going to continue to grow in the same way, right? Because we saw here that the uh, son has the same kind of malocclusion. So maybe the son was not given any orthodontic treatment when he was younger. So it, this shows that if you do not treat the patient, the patient is going to continue to grow in the similar skeletal pattern, right? So these are the important points that we have found out from this question. Now we have to identify what will be the treatment protocol for such a patient, okay? Now whenever there is a class 2 case, okay, there is a particular way in which we will try to identify the treatment. So if we go through it, so if there is a class 2 case, first thing that you need to know is whether the patient is a growing patient or it's a non-growing patient, okay? That is very important because like we know, when the patient is still in the growing stage, you can intercept or do some sort of growth modification, right? Second important thing to note is whether the class, uh, whether the malocclusion is a skeletal defect or whether it's a dental defect. Now, this is very, very important point because it's going to alter the treatment plan completely. Now, if the child is a growing patient who has a skeletal class 2, now again, this uh, class 2 can be because there is a prognathic maxilla, because it's a retrognathic mandible, or because it's a combination, okay? If the, if the child is a growing patient with a skeletal class 2 having a maxillary prognathism or a prognathic maxilla, the treatment of choice would be a headgear, because a headgear is going to restrict the maxillary growth so that the mandibular growth can catch up and the class 2 will be corrected or it is going to retract the maxilla, okay? It more so restricts the maxilla from growing anymore and helps to allow the mandible to catch up with its growth. If there is mandible or retrognathism, then we will give a myofunctional appliance such as an activator, a twin block. So these will help to overcome the uh, ret mandible or retrognathism and correct the class 2. Now, if it is a combination of both of these factors, then the appliance that we give will also be a combination uh, appliance which will include the effects of both a headgear as well as a functional appliance. Now, if the patient is a non-growing patient or an adult patient, okay, if this is an adult patient who has a skeletal class 2, now it depends whether the class 2 is mild to moderate or whether it is severe. Why this is important is because if it is just a mild to moderate type of a skeletal class 2, we can do something that is known as a camouflage. So camouflage is when you do orthodontic therapy with extractions. Okay, so certain extractions are done in order to camouflage the skeletal discrepancy. If it is very severe, such that even camouflage cannot be done, then depending on whether there is maxillary prognathism 
we will do a maxillary setback surgery or if it is a mandibular retrognathism we will do mandibular advancement surgery so orthognathic surgeries will be done okay now if it is just a dental class 2 and not a skeletal class 2 whether it is a growing patient or a non growing patient you will only do orthodontic therapy to correct it okay now if you will have a look at all of the options one by one the first is that of a herbs appliance so when is a herbs appliance given it is given in the late mixed dentition or the early permanent dentition okay now the age of the child is 8 years so she is in her early mixed dentition so this is not indicated also we will not wait and watch and do no treatment because like we saw that this is a hereditary type of malocclusion means it is not self correcting also here they have clearly mentioned that there is a distal step molar relation okay now the characteristic part about distal step molar relation is again it is not self correcting so we know that when there is a flush terminal plane right it is it results in a class 1 mal uh, class 1 molar relation when there is a mesial step it results in either a class 1 or with additional growth class 3 malocclusion or molar relation however a distal step will re lead to a class 2 molar relation or even with additional growth it will cause an endon molar relation right so it is not self correcting so we will not not do any treatment now between cervical headgear and activator how will we identify which appliance is to be used because here they have not mentioned which jaw is at fault they have not told us whether the maxilla is prognathic or the mandible is retrognathic now so to identify this we have to see what will be the effect of the appliance on the dentition so here they have told us that the cervical headgear is connected to the maxillary molar now whether the uh, class 2 is because of a prognathic maxilla or a retrognathic mandible or a combination a uh, maxillary molar a cervical headgear attached to a maxillary molar is going to bring about extrusion of the molars okay which is going to open the bite and the mandibular plane angle so what this means is the mandible is going to rotate backwards mandible will rotate backwards this is going to further Uh, cause a detrimental effect on the class two because the uh, ma uh, mandible rotating backwards is going to worsen the class two. So we know that we cannot give a cervical headgear. Okay, so the only option left here is an activator. Now we do not know whether the ma uh, mandible is retrognathic or not. But another thing to note here is that, like I told you, a headgear will have a restraining effect on the maxilla. right we are expecting the mandible to grow and catch up with the growth of the maxilla however have there been a mandibular retrognathism in this patient which we are not sure but if we assume that the patient has mandibular retrognathism cervical headgear again would not be helpful because it will only hold the maxilla but the patient does not have the any potential to uh, for the mandible to protract right so again in those cases it would not be helpful So here the best option is an activator which will help to advance the mandible will advance the mandible and correct the class 